All right, I got a great one for you guys today. So uh, I was actually recommended by someone to try this AI powered PDF editing app. Uh, if you haven't heard of it, it's called UPDF. And essentially it's just a really awesome AI powered app. And some of these amazing features include being able to view, annotate, edit, convert, sign, protect, organize, translate, and summarize your PDFs across iPhone, iPad, Mac, PC, and Android. And of course, you guys can actually use PDF across all of those platforms with just one license, which does make it a heck of a lot easier, I must say. And of course, I'll leave a bunch of links in the description uh, where you can also get an amazing discount on UPDF. So I want to direct your attention to the computer screen. So we're going to be up here in the reader section at first. Now, I want to talk about very simple, easy to understand stuff like how to zoom in and out and as well as how to use this in like a slideshow mode. So you'll see in the top middle, we have a zoom out, a percentage, and then we have a zoom in. So pretty straightforward. If you click the zoom out, it will of course zoom out. And then if you click the plus, it'll zoom in. And you can go as much as you would like in, in both directions. And then in the middle, uh, you can obviously change the number by clicking on it, but you can also click this arrow right here and it will bring up different preset sizes. So again, you can just choose whatever works for you, you know, easiest to understand. And that's going to be how you're kind of changing the sizes of it. And then you'll see up here in this corner where my mouse is, there'll be a slideshow button. So we're going to click play from start, for example. And you'll see you have it super easily viewable, accessible. And then, of course, you can click on the page and it will bring you to the next one. Now, of course, I only have two pages right now, but if you have multiple, you're going to click on it and that's how you're going to get through them. And then at the bottom left corner, you'll see there's different arrows. So again, if there was more than two pages, you can skip through them a lot easier. But then down here, you also have an edit button. And this is where you're going to have a laser pointer, a pen, and an eraser, as well as a mouse button. And then up here in the right corner, you'll see a presenter view. If you click on that, uh, it just makes it easier. It keeps track of time and stuff and is just kind of nice to look through. Of course, you got your arrows at the bottom. All right, so next I'm gonna show you how to annotate a PDF. So if we go to our comment section on the app, you'll see at the top, there's a whole bunch of different options. So sticky notes, if we click on it, you can change the color. Of course, you have an entire array of colors. And then we can just click somewhere on here. We'll have to select it again, we'll click right here. And then of course we can make it, you know, whatever we want and then we can leave it there. So when we click on it, it's always going to be there. Uh, of course, you can click on the notes and see it there. And of course, when you hover right over it, it'll just say whatever you type there. So to highlight, we're going to click on the highlight button. You know, we'll click a color again. I'll just choose this one. And you'll see as we go over a word, it'll actually highlight uh, the word. And of course, you can, if we select it again, you can do that for all kinds of different words. And then of course, there's other options like strike through, of course, where you select it and you can just bring it through a word like that. Pretty simple. Uh, for underlining, you'll click again, underline, and then select a word, and it'll underline it just like that. Again, very easy. So if we head over more towards the right side of the upper bar over here, you'll see we have a couple options. We have stickers, we have stamps, and we also have a signature. So of course, under stickers, if we click on it, you'll see there's tons of different options, categories, and then under each category, there's a ton of options. So let's say we want to put this check mark over here. Of course, it'll move around wherever my mouse is, and I'll just click it. It'll be right there and of course I can resize it by grabbing onto the, the sides of it I just put it there or if I wanted to put it there after going over something I could do it like that so very simple and easy to use um, underneath the stamps section of course you can have custom stamps uh, but if we just click one of these regular ones say we want you know one that says confidential we'll click on it and then of course we can again drag the sides to make it bigger and as far as the signature is concerned if we go down a page just to where it's a little bit more clear uh, you'll click on the signature button now i can click create signature and of course it'll ask you to download a font if you haven't already so what we'll do is we'll just sign something pretty simple again that's you know something like that i'll click the tab button it'll bring me my mouse back and then i can click create and then of course it'll drop it where my mouse is so i can click it there and then obviously change it uh, and move it around and stuff like that so again all very simple and intuitive to use so of course, when you get a PDF editor, obviously you're going to use it to edit the PDFs. Uh, and so I'm going to show you just that. So if we go over to our edit page, you'll see in the top, we have a text button, an image button, as well as a link button. So obviously text is pretty simple. So we'll click the color again. You have a whole spectrum of colors. 
I'm gonna click this um, blue shade, purple shade. Uh, and then if we go to our font size, uh, we'll just make it something simple. Bold, sure. Uh, of course we can have the, the slant thing. <laughs> And then of course the font size, you can click the arrow to change or type in a number. We'll do ours as 18. And then of course you have errors to switch it up. And then when you get out of that, you click on the page and then that's where you can start typing stuff. Of course I have it just like that. And then of course again, you can actually highlight it and then select the underline button for example and that will actually bring you that. And then again, you can grab onto these guys to make the text feel bigger or smaller. And then of course bring up the font if you would like to as well. So pretty simple stuff. Now to add an image, you can click on images and then when you click on the page, it'll bring up your files. Um, now, of course, I have a downloaded image right here. So I'll click on that, drag it in, and then give it a second, of course, to process. Now this is just a picture of water. And of course, I can change the size of it, make it longer or shorter. So we'll do something like that. We can move it around, of course, by clicking on it. Uh, and then also make it, you know, smaller like that. And then just kind of fit it. Like this is a picture of water. I'm going to just kind of move it around, you know, until I feel like it's in a good spot. And of course, when you actually select on it, you can rotate it different ways. You can flip it. You can also crop it. And just overall do a bunch of things with it. You know, kind of manipulate it how you would like to. Now in order to add a link, what you're going to do is, of course, click this link button up here. Uh, yeah, we'll just make it an invisible rectangle, something pretty simple. We'll click on it, and then when you see, we'll link to a page or website. I'll click link to a website, and I'll just do, like, youtube.com. And so then you can just click the little select button, and then you'll see, just kind of, if you leave it there, let me unselect a link. Uh, you'll have a youtube.com link just sitting there waiting. Uh, if this is a digital only PDF. Now to add a watermark and a background, what you're gonna do is go down to the page tools and you'll see a watermark up here. If I click on it and then click add down here in this corner, you'll see we obviously have a bunch of different um, options here. I'll just say like Isaac for now, just my name, <laughs> misspelled. Uh, and we do that. Of course we can do different ratios, opacities, all kinds of stuff, honestly. Uh, I don't usually watermark stuff, but of course, if you are into that or need to do that, there is more than enough options. Um, as far as backgrounds are concerned, if you click on Add Background, you'll see there are color set, uh, selectors. So yeah, let's just leave it at purple. Uh, obviously, you can add an image as a background or another PDF as a background. So let's just keep it simple uh, for colors. And we'll click save and just like that you'll have a background set for your pdfs so next i'm going to show you how to convert your pdfs into different files so i'm over here in just the comment menu but you'll see up here you see the button export pdf you'll click on that and you'll see you have a ton of options you have word powerpoint excel you have a whole bunch of other ones here so again more than you'll need let's say we just click word for example uh, and then you'll have the document language is for mindset automatically uh, the page range and then click odd or even pages and then click export and it will bring you to your uh, files. So another really awesome feature uh, of this app is to be able to kind of protect your different PDFs. So you'll see over again on this menu right here, there's a button that says protect using passwords so you can click it. Uh, and there's two options right now. So you'll have, it requires a password to open the document and then right here it says restrict editing and printing of the document. So if we just click document open, right? Just a simple, it's your, you're gonna need a password to open it. Let's say we make the password Isaac, right? Pretty simple. We'll select apply. And then once you make it for the first time, it says security settings will not be applied to the document until you save the document. You'll be able to continue to change security settings until you close the document. So I'll just click save. And then once I click save, uh, it'll make me enter the password. So I'll just enter Isaac. And then you can unlock it and easily get access to it just like that. And then of course, not that one. Uh, and then of course, you have the option to remove security now. And then for permissions, if you click on it, uh, just click change settings. And then of course, we can make the password Isaac again. Click apply. And then we'll just click save. And then of course, uh, we can save it like that. Now because I already have one in there, uh, it asked me to replace it. I'll just click replace, why not? Uh, but yeah, so that's kind of how you're going to use uh, password protecting to keep other people out of the passwords. Alright, so now I'm going to show you how to perform OCR on a PDF in order to make it an edible PDF. Uh, so if you don't know, OCR stands for Optical Character Recognition. 
And so essentially, it's as easy as you import a scan document. Uh, obviously, you won't be able to edit it. And then you perform this OCR action, and it allows you to basically edit it afterwards. Now, I do want to mention, when you are using UPDF, you do need an M family of, of Macs, like M1, M2, M3, uh, or maybe the upcoming M4. Uh, in order to be able to use OCR because when you try and use it on a, an Intel Mac, right? It, you're gonna need to download a separate plugin. So just kind of keep that in the back of your mind here So you'll see I have an example of a scan one here uh, just improving working productivity using apps So you'll see in the top right corner uh, where my mouse is there is a recognized text using OCR button so when you click that, it'll bring up this page. And this is kind of where you're going to select, you know, a searchable PDF, an image only PDF. And then of course you have your whole uh, layout thing. So after you kind of picked what you want to do, you're going to click perform OCR and then give it a second. And then it'll, it'll say it's converting. And then so basically now after it's finished converting, you'll kind of give it a second. And then now you basically have a fully editable PDF, right? So you can highlight it again, very easy, obviously change the colors as you would a normal edible PDF. And then of course you can move stuff around like this picture that it was kind of in, uh, just kind of stuck in frame can now be moved easily. Of course you can move your text and it does use all the AI features, uh, in order to be able to change stuff. All right. So I've saved what I would consider the best for last and it's definitely like the coolest the funnest to use of all the features of UPDF is all of the AI related fun stuff, right? We obviously have our main menu. I'm just sitting inside of the edit PDF menu right now. Uh, but if you go down to the bottom right corner, you'll see UPDF AI as well as a comments list. Uh, but we're going to be focusing on UPDF AI. So after you click it, it'll ask you to kind of get started, you know, give it your, give it access to your PDF. And so once it does that, it kind of gives you a summary as you can see of of what it is so let's say for example you'll see where it says the iPhone introduced by Apple in 2007 blah 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 let's go ahead and we're gonna copy that as so you'll see once we copy it there will be this explain button that pops up but you can also click this arrow and that's where you can pull up your summarize and translate so for summarize let's click that and let's see what it says so you'll see it took that whole paragraph and it said Apple Inc introduced introduced in 2007 fundamentally changing the smartphone industry uh, the iPhone design interface and features, blah, 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 right? So it basically took that paragraph and again, just cut it down, made it easier to understand. Now, if we click the arrow again, we see we have translate. So let's say, you know, we translate it from English to Japanese and we click generate. Uh, obviously I can't read Japanese, <laughs> but there you go. You can, uh, you know, if you speak Japanese, then you can confirm that. But so there's that, again, very simple and easy to use. And then of course you can have it explain it to you. Uh, so if we click generate, it'll just give you a, a good, easy to understand explanation. Now, again, this is not a crazy hard paragraph to understand, but you do kind of get the gist where if it's something you don't quite understand, you can put it in there and it will just help you understand a heck of a lot better, which would improve uh, workflow for sure for me quite a lot. But that's really been it guys. I hope you've enjoyed this awesome video. I had so much fun making it and you know, I love all things tech and so to have the opportunity to really get to play around uh, with different AI apps and stuff like that, it, it's, it's an awesome opportunity. So again, just as a reminder, I will leave a couple links in the description that I would love for you to go check out. And of course, check the comments in order to get a limited time offer uh, for UPDF Pro. So hope you guys enjoyed and I will see y'all in the next one. So yeah, bye guys.